Hi everybody, so this is Bite Size Biology for um, Fungi. Uh, a, a topic, a chapter or whatever comes up um, fairly regularly, like Monera. I actually think this chapter comes up more than Monera because you've also got the experiment involved in this chapter as well, uh, which obviously um, plays into uh, the experiment sections. So without further ado, just to start it off, you'll see that there could be some topics from the main questions here that's what will be similar to that of Monera as I discussed in the previous video. So you could also you could be asked to draw a lab diagram of rhizopus and also yeast. So there's two fungi uh, fungus you need to study. Fungi I suppose is the plural isn't it? Um, whereas for Monera there's only the one. Describe the defense of sexual reproduction of rhizopus um, and yeast. Well yeast should be asexual reproduction but that's okay. Um, draw the Monera fungi growth curve. We see that already. State the pros and cons of fungi. I've seen that in Monera, very similar. Describe batch and continuous processing definitions. Okay, both of which come up in Monera as well. Um, seven, describe the leaf yeast experiment, uh, which I will go over as well in this uh, video. And finally, to state the nutri nutrition types, which also comes up in uh, Monera uh, as well. So quite a bit of overlap. So if you're usually students do monera first and then they do fungi, um, which is fine. And I would certainly have done cell division before I do either of those chapters, but particularly for fungi, because cell division comes up quite a bit in sexual reproduction. Um, and it just, it just makes a little bit more sense. It's more cohesive if you have that chapter done beforehand. However, I'm conscious that some teachers don't do cell division beforehand, before this. Uh, and you might just have to learn afterwards um, and look, we'll do our best with the questions um, that are coming up. So without further ado, 2019 or something, this came up last. Uh, question 15a, um, usually a 25 mark question. And straight away you're asked to draw a large label diagram of structural rhizopus during asexual reproduction. Um, they just want to diagram rhizopus really, um, guys here, and make sure you put in spores for asexual reproduction part of it. Uh, I didn't draw a diagram because I hate drawing this diagram. I'm really bad at it, particularly bad at labelling it, um, making it clear and cohesive. But that's okay because you know I'm not sitting gleaming search anytime soon or anything, and so that's your problem. But this is what you should be drawing. Okay, you certainly have to have the mycelium, which is over here, which contain two parts: the hypha, and then the tips of it, the rhizoids. The tips of the rhizoids, the hypha is like the um, the branch. Uh, the stolon, which is an aerial hypha, you need to have the um, sporangia spore. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Here, that's like the stalk, the stem of um, the fungus, rhizopus, and you need to have the sporangium here. The columella and the apophysis, I'm not really sure how you pronounce that, um, aren't really important at all, to be honest. I would put in spores, however. Okay, because the sporangium would burst, and you know that's where the spores are, and that's asexual reproduction. Uh, I would have that in it. It's actually not that bad, to be honest, but um, I'm just not great at diagrams myself. Now, mode nutrition does rice plus use. So there's two answers you can write for this. It doesn't specify whether it wants you to say, like, if it's um, autotrophic or heterotrophic, or if it's a different or what version of autotrophic or heterotrophic, if it is one of those, uh, which it must be. So starting off, I said rhizopus is heterotrophic, okay? Um, it cannot make its own food, okay? It doesn't have chloroplasts containing chlorophyll, which can photosynthesize. Not there. Only there for plants. Some monera can um, undergo autotrophic conditions um, or autotrophic... Um, what's the word I'm looking for there, guys? Um, yeah, processes, I suppose, uh, in terms of chemosynthesis but not fungi, um, or at least not rhizopus anyhow, to be precise about this. Uh, I presume some fungus can actually undergo um, um, autotrophic processes. But for rhizopus, it is heterotrophic, guys, feeds off dead organic matter, and if you want it to be, so if you want to be precise about this, it's saprophytic here, okay? So saprophytic um, is a, head, a subheading under um, heterotrophic. Part three, describe an environmental condition that would cause rhizopus to reproduce sexually. So they prefer to reproduce asexually, okay? It's a lot faster, a lot more convenient, only one parent necessary. But they will reproduce um, 
sexually under some conditions. And we call that a lack of water, adverse temperatures. In other words, dehydration. Okay, so lack of water, adverse temperatures, that means it's too hot, okay, or it's incorrect temperatures, okay, so dehydration. Uh, I would write all of that, to be honest, for that one. Let's just tick these off as we're going along. And finally then, the big one, okay, um, this is where the 30 marks are coming from. I keep saying 25, I'm thinking of biology or chemistry there. I should be saying 30 um, for these. Um, describe the detail and process, describe in detail the process of sexual reproduction in Rhizopus. Now, I see students overcomplicate this one all the time. Yes, there is a bit involved in it, okay, but you can, you can condense it down quite a significant amount. Like, there's no need to be learning off 12, 15 steps, okay? Especially when you can narrow it down into, I don't know, 8 or 9, which is still a lot, I know that, okay? Um, starting off, so, and then a number of these are going along. So, 1. Opposite strains of hyphae grow close to one another. These opposite strains are going to be positive or negative. 2. Hyphae swellings touch. Okay, and I'll have, I'll have a diagram of this um, for you guys later on. So the high face wings touch three, the gametes. There has to be gametes somewhere. And what happens there is the gametes move into the swellings. And we call that the progametania. I could be pronouncing that one completely wrong, I don't know. Four. Cross walls form, which kind of separates the, um, the swellings from the high face. Um, so now you just have the gametes inside there. Now, they become quite heavy once you do that, so a suspensor also forms to support it. So once the cross wall is formed, you've got gametania there. Six, fertilization. Now, this one happens in every single um, process for sexual reproduction. So regardless whether it's um, fungi, rhizopus, I should say, be more precise about this, or humans, or whatever animals, okay, you have to say fertilization occurs. You will get the marks for it. Okay. Seven. A zygospore forms around a zygote, which then germinates by meiosis to produce a haploid hypha. Bit of a mouthful. Okay. Um, a zygospore, which is there for protection, will, will form around the, um, the zygote, which is diploid. The zygote then will eventually germinate. Okay, it's like a seedling, really. Okay, it's going to germinate once it has the correct temperature, the correct amount of nutrients, and so forth. Okay, and it germinates though uh, um, by meiosis. And anything that's germinating by meiosis is going to produce haploid hyphae or haploid something, can you? Okay, because that's what meiosis does, produces haploid um, organisms. Uh, and that's it. So, seven steps there. You didn't need all of them. You could have just said, um, I think, I'm off the top of my head there now, fine enough, I think you could have just said five of those and you got full marks. It doesn't matter which five. But um, I think out of the entire chapter of this this section is definitely the toughest. And it's definitely one that requires students to go back over and over and over again. But this is this. I wouldn't learn any more than this. Just keep it to this. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't learn any less than this either, though, to be honest. Because you are putting yourself at risk of losing marks um, because as you know mark schemes do change uh, so this really is the bare minimum but it comes up quite often so because of that alone you should be um, considering it as a serious question uh, and likewise this was 2019 like this could come up that same question here could come up again in 2021 okay it didn't come up in 2020 but it could certainly come up in 2021 okay so that detail on sexual reproduction is important Okay, let's move on. And you'll see the same questions being asked again uh, very soon. Now, this is on about the experiment. So there's two sections where this can come up. And in 2019, it came up again um, in here. So the first one there is named fungus other than yeast that you studied um, as part of your course, Rhizopus. Give one way which um, fungus is different from yeast. Now, I should have, have two things here. I should say Rhizopus is multicellular, and I just say yeast is unicellular, meaning it's one cell only. See how my writing here now, guys, is absolutely shocking, isn't it? Um, so I have to have it done beforehand, and I usually get someone else to do it for me. 
Um, usually for the experiment questions, guys, you'll see, or like you're dealing with 30 marks, A, usually the first part of it, okay, it's going to be the theory on the chapter, okay, um, and then B and C, if there is a C, will be on the experiment itself. So this is on about the uh, leaf yeast, which is the experiment you have to do for this one. So mention two aseptic techniques you carried out to ensure pathogen-free environment. Okay, so asepsis is to, um, it means it's free of um, pathogenic or pathogens um, there. So what I did there was you flame your forceps and you wash your hands with disinfectant. That would kill off the pathogenic um, fungi out there or bacteria even. What type of agar is recommended here? This one you have to learn as off, guys. Okay, it's malt agar. Okay, it's specifically for leaf yeast. Okay, so it's a really important one that you just need to learn off. Um, but malt agar for that one, guys. Describe how the plates were stored uh, from introduction of the yeast source until the yeast growth was visible on the agar. Now, it's causes a bit of confusion here, um, simply because a lot of schools don't have um, incubators. Uh, my school doesn't, uh, at least not yet. Um, and if school does have an incubator, they often have it in the prep room, so you don't actually get to see this process taking place. Uh, but luckily enough, it's just two sentences, two small little points there to make, and you're done. So you have it on the right side up um, for 48 hours. For the first two days, you have it no as it is normally. And then what we do then is we put it upside down in the incubator for five days. So there's two points here. One, I'm saying it's upside down in the incubator. And then the second thing I'm saying, five days. So it's approximately around 20 degrees Celsius. Um, and what we'll get then is we'll get the formation of pink colonies. So for the first 48 hours, we'll have it on the right side up um, as normal. And then you put it upside down in the incubator for five days. Uh, now again, five days, that could be a little bit less. It could be a little bit more, it depends. Um, I just learn off five days and be done with it. So just a reason why few or no leaf yeast may have grown on the agar. Okay. Um, well. And the main ones there really is temperatures are going to be might be inappropriate. So, for instance, you don't really do this experiment in winter. Um, you don't even do it in autumn sometimes um, or early spring because the temperatures are too cold. You're better off doing it close, as close as possible to summer. I know the Irish climate isn't the warmest, um, but it's certainly warmer than what it would be in winter. Um, so if the temperatures are, are right, the enzymes don't work and so forth, Everything comes back to those enzymes. Um, so yeah, unsuitable temperatures, what I said. So 2016, so there's two there's two parts. There's the rice bus section, and then there's the yeast. Okay, uh, so this has been a while now since this has come up. So anyone sitting in the 2021 paper there is going to be thinking, this is uh, definitely one that they should be studying. So first off, how do we know from the diagram that the reproduction is asexual? So first off, yeast is asexual. We know that. We've seen that from before. One parent, guys. That's it. Okay? There's only one parent present. Okay? Let's keep it simple. For asexual reproduction, only one parent. Uh, the name of this type of uh, reproduction is called budding. How does the genetic makeup of the new yeast relate to that of the parent? Okay, it's going to be identical. Anything that undergoes... Um, budding or mitosis in this case here um, when there's only one parent asexual reproduction is going to be um, identical explain your answer well you just refer to mitosis so my, mitosis reproduced um, by budding identical daughter cells whatever you want to call it okay um, an advantage and a disadvantage of asexual reproduction in organisms such as yeast well you could say no variation for both of these the advantage is no variation. So if you have a, if that particular type of yeast was of high quality, having no variation would be a good thing because it means all the rest of its offspring are going to be also high quality. The, in other words, the qualities won't be diluted down. Another advantage of it is that it's very quick. Um, for this process to undergo um asexual reproduction, you only need one parent. A disadvantage: we said no variation again. Okay, variation often leads to um, better adaptations, which in turn then leads to evolution occurring over a long period of time. Uh, another disadvantage is um, increased variation. So, like I said over here, about variation, um, if, you have, if you have a really good 
type of yeast that you are cultivating and you want to keep its properties okay um, you want to have as little variation as possible okay uh, okay I'm feeling confusing myself with this one here now e name another organism which belongs to the same kingdom as yeast rhizobus okay all come under fungi 2015 draw a large label diagram to show structure rhizobus so you can see what we have here same business again guys Okay, what is the role of fungi such as rhizobus in nature? Okay, recycling. Okay, it's a really, really good decomposer. Okay, we often refer to it as it recycles nutrients. Okay, so the role of it is the decomposer, which we have here. And why do we need it? Is that nutrients are recycled. All of this actually is important there. That nutrients are recycled. So it's a Fungi is a decomposer in nature so that nutrients are recycled. That's why it's so important, because we only have a finite uh, amount. Give one structural difference between fungi and plants. Um, fungi have no chloroplasts. Plants have chloroplasts. Again, you must treat the examiner as if he or she correcting it okay, doesn't have any knowledge of biology. Okay, So you spell it out for them. If you say one of them has chloroplasts, you must say the other one does not. Okay, just to be sure. Name this type, oh sorry, name this method of asexual reproduction in rhizopus. Now, rhizopus here, guys, okay, not yeast. In yeast, it's budding, but for rhizopus, it's called sporulation. It's producing spores. So these guys over here, okay, um, those spores over here, guys, okay, is by means of asexual reproduction, okay, which they prefer. And then describe in detail the process of sexual reproduction in rhizopus which we go through in here and I'll be coming across this um, in a moment okay uh, so we'll go back to this in two seconds because I want to show you a diagram of this so 2012 here I think it's one of our we're halfway there now give or take sexual reproduction in rhizopus is triggered by adverse environmental stimulus I suggest one, one such stimulus okay dehydration adverse temperatures lack of water okay all of those are fine. Draw diagrams. This is why I wanted to come back to. To show the main events of sexual reproduction in rhizobus. In your diagrams, label tree structures other than the zygospore. Okay, so the zygospore is one of them. You must label three others. Okay, so this is why I wanted to go to. So, this is what we have here. We have your hyphae, which is your positive and negative strains here. Okay, of hyphae. What happens there at the first step then is... The hyphae go close to one another. They produce swellings, which we have here. Gametes go into these swellings. Okay, everything goes back to those gametes. Cross walls develop, which separate the hyphae from the swellings on both sides. And when those cross walls form and there's gametes inside here, it's actually going to be quite heavy. Okay, so this is the programinitania here, and then therefore a suspensor has to form um, around it. Okay to um to support its weight i suppose is what we're looking for here now i think i there's your cross walls formed gametania i actually said that's a step beforehand the gametes move in swellings for gametania cross walls here to support the heavy gametania here i knew i was skipping something there um so this is the gametania here as we have the gametania here i should say just the pro gametania the gametania here and here Fertilization will take place. You can see this wall here is broken down, um, and you want to get fertilization between the positive strain and the negative strain of the um, of the hyphae, and then you get the production of a zygospore, which is here. That zygospore is then going to divide, um, which we have over here. Um, zygospore will divide or germinate. Some people use it; doesn't really matter. Okay, as long as you know that it divides or germinates by meiosis, you'll be fine. And it produces a hyphae. Um, some people draw the hyphae inside here. You can if you want. Um, it's up to yourselves. This diagram here, by the way, guys, could be completely different to what someone else does. Like it really does vary. Uh, and in exams, if you're asked to describe it, you can give a diagram to help you along with your answers. But obviously, that diagram has to be labelled. So that's really, really important. Um, so opposite strains of hyphae go close to one another. They produce these swellings, okay, which touch, okay. Gametes go into these swellings. This is the progametania here. Cross walls then are produced. It's quite heavy, 
And as soon as those cross walls are produced, we call it the gametangia. A suspensor forms around it to um, support its weight. Um, fertilization will take place here. A zygospore is produced. That zygospore uh, is diploid. It will germinate or divide by means of meiosis to form haploid hyphae. Now, next question. So, two advantages of rhizopus of um, give two advantages to rhizopus, I should say, of the zygospore formation. Okay, that's a nice little question there, really. Um, first one is survival and yum in adverse conditions. Um, so the zygospore is very similar to that of the endospore, which is seen in the manera under the, under the asexual reproduction by means of binary fission. Um, a zygospore is also for survival, but it's also helpful for dispersal, because what happened there is that zygospore, once it's in suitable conditions, will burst and it will push the um the hyphae away from the parent um, fungus, which means reduce competition the further it is away. Okay, what term is used to describe the process of asexual reproduction in yeast budding? What happens to new cells um, formed in this process? Okay, they form a colony. How does asexual uh, reproduction in rice bus differ from that in yeast? Okay, so one of them you're producing spores and the other one you're producing um, buds or budding colonies. Okay, so rice bus produces spores, budding does not. Okay, um, you get a colony forming um, or it breaks away. It doesn't really matter what you say for that. Okay. We're nearly there, thank God. Okay, so 2011, question 15C. The questions will be fairly similar from now on. Give the name and state the function of A. A, look at this here now, guys, okay? These are the tips, the tips here. So they're the rhizoids, okay? And the rhizoids are there for anchorage um, or for the absorption of nutrients, okay? Or digestion of nutrients, whichever you want to say, okay? Anchorage, digestion of nutrients. Name part B. Um, and explain why reproduction associated with this is asexual. So B is a sporangy spore, uh, which is, sorry, sporangy spore is this thing here. I knew it was mi mixing those two up there. Um, the sporangium is the head, okay? And why is it asexual? Well, it goes, same thing with what we did before with the yeast. Why was that asexual? One parent. Nutrition is saprophytic. What does saprophytic mean? Now, again, cannot be writing down dead organic matter here. No good. You must write down that it is an organism that feeds off dead organic matter. Why is this important? We've seen this before uh, in nature. Okay, it's important to recycle nutrients. Tick, tick. Okay, what does heterotrophic mean? It means it cannot make its own food. Name another form of nutrition employed by some fungi. Um, in that case there, guys, uh, they're under heterotrophic, there's two types, there's saprophytic and then there's parasitic. So parasites, you might have heard of Atlant's foot, uh, which is a parasite. Uh, it feeds off living organic matter. Saprophyte feeds off dead organic matter. Parasites feed off living organic matter. Give two examples of harmful members. Now they aren't actually looking for strictly for names here, they're just looking for examples in general. So you could have said food poisoning, food spoilage, you know, you get getting mouldy and stuff like that. Ringworm and Atlant's foot are all examples um, of um, harmful members of fungus. The beneficial ones are making alcohols um, or making yogurts and so forth. And that's about it for this um, bite-size video on biology. So look, we went over a few things there. So just a quick recap there. A diagram of rhizopus there and yeast. You need to know both. Uh, and they do come up, particularly rhizopus, um, because obviously it's a bit more detailed, I suppose. Events of sexual reproduction for rhizopus. Okay, so there's about seven or eight steps there that you definitely need to know. And those buzzwords need to be said. And yeah, it, for a lot of you, you're just going to have to learn that one off. But try and follow it step by step. I think the diagram could be very, very helpful myself. Label diagram now. So use that. And it's asexual reproduction for yeast, just to clarify that one there, okay? And that's by budding. There's not really a whole pile you need to know about that. Draw the monora fungi growth curve. Now, I didn't do it in this one here because I have it done in the um, monora video. The video would be too long if I did that as well. Pros and cons of fungus, battery continuous processing, and definitions 
if I didn't do it in this video, the video would have been too long. Um, as I said earlier, it's done in the manner of video for bite size um, biology. Describe the leafy yeast experiment, we did that earlier, and just be careful about the incubation um, section of it. Uh, and state nutrition types. Okay, so the fungus is heterotrophic, guys, and there's two subdivisions there in terms of nutrition it is saprophytic and parasitic. You have to be very careful of um, the definitions for that, that you're saying the complete sentence rather than just a few buzzwords. So, yeah, that's it. I hope this helps, guys, um, with your studies. Um, and remember to link us into Monera for the ones that. Um, the growth curve, the batch and continuous processing, and definitions. Okay, guys, and um, good luck with it.